I've known Justin for 15 years. You know, when your best friend decides to not be what you always thought he was gonna be, and he was gonna go something in the complete opposite direction, you're hesitant. It's almost like your kid telling you, I'm gonna be president, or I'm gonna be an astronaut. You're like, okay, you know, you eat toothpaste, but you wanna be president. Please welcome Nick's very special guest, originally from Oklahoma City, now lives in New York City. You may have seen him at the Apollo Theater. Please welcome Mr. Justin Smith. My name's Aaron. Uh, I've worked at the Comedy Cellar for just about 10 years, and I've known Justin for, I want to say, I don't know exactly, two, probably more like three years. I actually went to see him at New York Comedy Club um, which is only the second time that I've gone to see anyone do comedy outside of the cellar in 10 years. I think he's well on his way to, you know, getting there. It's a, how do you breach that? But then it's like almost then you breach another, into another level where you're like maybe a regular at the cellar, but you're also stuck at that level and you can't breach into, you know, stardom or really being a success. So every level kind of has its, I think it's a plateau kind of system where it's five years, you get here, then you make a nice jump, then it's another five, you know. Obviously it's different for everyone. Comics not necessarily ruin their life. I think comics that are successful, their lives are already ruined. Um, and that's the reason they are comics and that's the reason they're funny. Uh, I don't think they necessarily get worse once they become a comic. They may just, you know, stay in that same kind of you know, dark, depressed, <laughs> egomaniac type of self-serving person that they are. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's not for the faint of heart. It's definitely uh, it's definitely a tough line of work for anybody. I think it's a tough line of work for even someone that's you know Seinfeld. I'm sure he has some interesting moments when he goes to sleep at night. So. I think there's something about the fear of like, once you say, I'm a comic, mm -hmm. that's my job. I don't do anything else. This is, this is my mm -hmm. job. Right. There's something about that switch that happens in your brain. Mm -hmm. So I really get upset with people that work regular jobs, but will shit on people who do this like it's not work. That really fucking bothers me. Now, don't get, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm no um, fool. I don't, it's not like I don't understand the fact that, like, I don't have to deal with a shitty boss. I got to look in the mirror to find that guy. But I don't have to deal with a shitty boss. I'm not doing construction. You know what I mean? But I guess more so what I'm saying that irks me, or maybe, who knows, maybe I'm jealous of it. I don't know. If any psychiatrist want to analyze me, feel free. But... This isn't a promised check. You know what I'm saying? You have promised money. If your money is promised and you're complaining about how shitty this is, it's like, bro, you want to switch? You want to switch? You want to have the fucking last week before the fucking first and you don't know if you're going to have your rent? And you need this fucking last fucking show of the month that you need to make sure that shit happens. You need to hope this promoter ain't janky. You need to hope that fucking people show up. You need to fucking understand even after all your ego, like, damn, I ain't from uh, Chicago. I don't know how many motherfuckers gonna come out here. I gotta make sure I can get radio. Oh shit, I don't got a radio agent. You gotta make sure that all that stuff, because no matter what, you have to pay your bills. But when you work a job and your bills are promised and you get to do stand up, but then you complain about that. It's like, I get it. But I can't say I appreciate it. Mac Miller would always use this word, elevate. Mm -hmm. And I love that word because elevate has nothing to do with anybody else. Yeah. It just has to do with you yeah. and your own projections. The same thing, yeah. that, like, it's like the point you made with Damien where it's mm -hmm. like, it has everything to do with where you, so like you just becoming more culture, more well read, yeah. you mm -hmm. become a better, you use your mind better. You can become more focused, more driven. Mm -hmm. And when all of a sudden, all those things that are around you that are distractions, yeah. they're all gone. Yeah. You, you just want to take your art and be better. Right. And I think so many people like miss that. Right. But I think the reason that they miss it is because 
there's one thing that a lot of us don't do is that a lot of us haven't defined what success is. Excuse me, the lisp. Uh, a lot of us haven't defined what success means to us, right? Now, most people look at Kevin Hart and go, he's successful. It's like, yeah, Kevin Hart is successful. He definitely is, probably the most successful. But also, and this isn't a, this isn't a knock by any means, fucking Andrew Schultz is also successful. You know what I mean? There's also somebody whose name you might not know that's only doing, like, spots, right? But they're paying the bills. Right. Their fucking kids are going through college, they're paying their mortgage, and they're doing comedy full time. When you make decisions, make sure you can look in the mirror and be happy with what you did. That's all. If you look in the mirror and go, I fucked up, well, then maybe don't fuck yourself up like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying be afraid of your dream. I am saying if it's going to be worth throwing it all the way, then throw it all the way. I don't know what people think being a comic is, but it's not like Instagram. Like people think, oh, it's just great thing after great thing after great thing. No, there's so many, th it just takes years and years and years. There's just so many things in between these amazing moments and people don't seem to realize that. So now it's about likes and shares and, and what people other like what people think of what you're doing and, and the idea of what it is gets lost. We're here in Bentonville, Arkansas. We got a show at the Bike Rack Brewery tonight. And we're walking around downtown Bentonville to see all the culture and the history of Bentonville. I give us three minutes before we see a Confederate statue. Like three whole minutes. Well, I mean, we already have the Walmart Museum, like right here. And, uh, oh look, there's the Confederate statue. Clock me. Oh, that took 30 seconds. <laughs> I just love the fact that if anybody ever found me dead and they just look through my pockets and they just found like this is just the most psychotic like you're like who is this guy like what failed ridiculous guy has all like oh it's like I have failed baseball stats in my pockets everywhere I don't think you know where I'm going uh, <laughs> This is, this is basically a town filled with people that didn't have the courage to move to Brooklyn. Like, that's pretty much, that's all this is. Yeah, 100% I'm right. I know I'm right. I know Brooklyn rejects when I see them. And there's two white guys in front of us, and they're having a discussion. And the discussion is, what would be the worst day to have to relive as a person, right? And one of the white guys said, uh, the Battle of Dunkirk because it's 400,000 French and British troops fighting a battle on the beach. And the guy says, no, 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 it's a battle in Normandy because it's 60,000 American troops fighting a battle on the beach. My Dominican friend Hector, without missing a beat, just said, man, even on white people's worst day, they're still on the beach. You're like, oh, shit. You ever realize your friend's a prophet? Like, you ever realize that shit? Thank you so much. My name is Jeff. Dude, like, this is, this is like the epitome of where you said, like, a comic will be like, hey, you can crash in my place. It's like, I'll stay with my girlfriend. It's like, what he doesn't tell you is that his place is a mattress. Like, there's no place to sit down here. Like this is like, this is literally like Japanese internment camp style torture. Hey, we're gonna give you a place to sleep, but there's no place to sit down. So either you gotta sit on the floor or you gotta stand up. How do you not like how do you not move in with furniture for a stool? A stool is like the first thing you move like oh thank thanks buddy. Thanks for letting me crash in a mattress on the floor. A trophy, we got a trophy. It's a one-armed trophy, it's a special Olympics trophy. I don't even want to know what that is. This is how this is how the Blair Watch started. This is like just you know uh, when it, we found their footage and they found something in the freezer, and they're all dead now. By the way, we weren't warned at all. Like hey, just so you know, 
No furniture in here. It's just like, hey man, we've got a bed for you. You wanna know what chasing your dream looks like? There it is. There's your dream. Now I'm gonna go eat Taco Bell. The life of a road comic is you wake up on whatever uh, mattress or floor uh, that you find and you just, you try to find food. Uh, You've, you learn little tricks, you know, like one a comic taught me one time that if you go to certain hotels have like free breakfast, so you just walk in like you're a guest at the hotel and you just eat breakfast. And if you do it right, you can also pack for lunch too. Like you just learn little tricks and every comic has like a thing that they do while they're on the road. And one of the things that I do is I find cool cigar lounges and I just, and I smoke with locals. Being a road comic means you're constantly sacrificing. When you do like a tour like this, like you stay in different places like every night. So some nights you'll be staying at a buddy's house, you'll be crashing on the couch. Some nights you're in a nice hotel. And like some nights, like tonight, uh, I'm staying uh, with the owner of the club at his house. And I think it's a, a weird, cause like people hear that and they're like, oh my gosh, like staying at somebody's house or crap, like that sucks. And it's like, I mean, it can suck, but the way I look at it is, is these people that are in comedy, they're in your life, you know, no matter how long you're here, you're all in it for the same amount of time. And these people become your family. That was dust. <laughs> <laughs> at my age, my idea of it being bisexual is by income twice a year. <laughs> live at the Apollo and the Kennedy Center. Please give it up for Justin Smith. I was in, uh, I was in Bentonville last night at a brewery. And here's the thing, being around, like, being around hipsters, like fat hipsters with beards, that's amazing. Like, you guys, that's, what, that's what's great about this part of the country is you guys take everything skinny and just make it fat. Like, that's what, like, I live in New York and Brooklyn, like, hipsters are, like, skinny and, you know, healthy and, it's like you deep fried hipster. Like that's <laughs> hilarious to me. Uh, Springfield, you guys have been great. My name's Justin Smith. Thank you so much. We've been on the show. We've been on the show tonight at the Blue Room. Two shows, and uh, they're gonna be great. I'm sure he's looking for somebody. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. I like being, I like being here in Springfield. This is my favorite. It's not my favorite. I don't want to. <laughs> Come on, let's be honest. It's not your favorite either. Like, let's not all pretend like we. You're here the way that I'm here. Career's not going as good as you thought. Like, <laughs> that's the whole thing. Some of you work at a grain store. Uh, <laughs> I do stand up, and I'm not even doing stand up at the end. So. <laughs> what does that mean? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, you look great. Hey, nice jacket. But it's like, it's like, hey, are you lucky now? Like, you, like, right. so yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Reminiscing about them good old days Trying to find peace, but it still won't fade I got problems that I don't even want to resolve And I ain't making it no better with this codeine drink I'm steady putting in my system Know they want to put me in the system And they wonder why I be so fly Cause a snake can't fly without assistance Everybody looking out for self So I gotta look out for me Pray to God that he look out for us I don't want to die I just want to get in and out Just to make it back to the people I love But I can't go home the way This guy is incredible Please give it up for Justin Smith, everybody Let him hear it Andrew one more time, huh? Isn't he great? It's fantastic. Um, this is, uh, I tell you what, this is, I, I like doing bars like, I, I'll be honest with you, this is exactly like the bar that I started in, and it's good to know that I moved to New York City 
just to come back to the bar that I started in. It's always a really <laughs> this is a great feeling. It's wonderful. Not sexually, just the first time you see it, and you're like, oh. I want to buy a drink. Yeah, so you're like, that. You remember that. I want to buy a drink. Uh, I remember the first time uh, I that I saw drink. one. Anyway, uh, Tulsa, you guys were a lot of fun. My name's Justin Smith. Thank you. And then it's yeah. like, there's no stage. And in the middle of my set, there's these girls that are like, buy me a drink. Like, I'm legitimately like, like they're so loud. And then all the while, they're, like, there are people leaving, but they're walking like right by the stage. There's a dude that gives me knuckles on the way out. And then and, <laughs> oh, and I'm God. like, I'm legitimately like trying to do a show. Of course, yeah. And like, it's it's it makes me mad that you're like, listen, this is my home. Like, can I not get like some kind of... It's, help me, help me, it's a help very me help you. Not respected art form. I mean, and it, it's it, it's 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 infuriating because I always think like for an art form that has so little respect uh, from society, society sure cares a hell of a lot when we tweet something that they don't like. So it's like pick one. Like, do you respect us and do you care about what we're saying, or do you not? Some places you go, and it's like they respect they respect it so much the sacrifice that comics make just to be here, just to even come here. I agree, but also then on the flip side, to play devil's advocate for myself, because I am a, like, I'm very uh, in love with myself. Uh, I, I do like to remind myself, it's like, okay, bitch, like, you still chose to, like, take people hostage and talk at them for money for a living. Right. So it's like, I could have been a nurse. <laughs> you know? Like, it's all, but it's all, like, me like there's no, like... I think it's more than, like, oh, we're traveling to entertain you. It's more like, hey, have you ever had a dream? Well, we're people who uh, kind of, like, get, get, like risked it all to follow that dream. And I think if everyone kind of did that, the world would be a much more pleasant place. I think some of it is this anger that's coming from people who never got to follow that dream, who never got to or never had the courage to. There's two, you know, never got to because of money or because someone got pregnant that's a different thing if you just never had the courage to I don't really I don't like feel sad for you um, but there are people who just never they like they, they they would have been homeless truly homeless on the streets had right. they tried to follow their dreams and that is certainly something that I take into account like it is still no matter what happens it's like wow I'm a comedian and I live in New York City like I've already kind of made it and I always say that to people who are like oh I didn't get this I didn't get JFL it's like you're working as a comedian in New York City, like, that's amazing. Right. It's magical. I think the one thing I always respect about you, and I always I always tell people this, because you have you have a fan base and you have all those things. But I do I do love the fact that you still continue to pursue a pure being a pure comic. Because you're so tired and you're fighting so hard for so many years, like I didn't have a, tw like, I, my 20s were spent in the back of bars, you know, waiting to go up for five minutes, you know, after I bought a beer that I didn't want on a Tuesday. And so I was, you know, I was so tired and I'm more so like now, I didn't hit cr cruise control. I'm just trying to do like the fun stuff I couldn't afford to do or I didn't have time to do my 20s. Like go to, like go to a Katy Perry concert, like go to Lollapalooza at age 31. Like those are the kinds of things that I right. did. But I mean, we've seen too many people who got famous too fast or successful too fast and then just didn't have the chops to back it up. And people who were good comics, and I observe, observe, observe. I love observing famous people. I always have uh, since I was a kid. And um, I think I just don't want to do that. Plus, I love comedy. I'm not like, I think a lot of people are using it as a stepping stone for something. Because people are like, what's the next thing? What after stand up? I'm like, there is no next thing. It's just like, the next thing is just getting better as a stand up and like keeping doing it. Um, but also, I do have a fan base, but also my fan base hates me. So, I mean, a good, a good portion of them, not, not, they don't, I think they're there to just troll me, honestly. Right. This is the old neighborhood that I used to live in when I was in Oklahoma. And uh, that's the house that I sold to move to New York City. Left his family, left a job, 
you know, ventured out and tried to do something unique to to his personality and that he thought he would be good at. And I I remember we were sitting in JJ's down in Bricktown and he started talking about New York and I was like, they are going to eat you up. You're not ready to go. And then fuck it, he just took off anyway and did it. Sitting right here with my hands where they used to be and I mean, I literally, I just, I would sit like this and watch the show and then come up with stuff and just riff. And this used to be my favorite night of the week. Yeah, I think he sacrificed uh, a good amount. You know, there's, there's a safety in being where you've always been. I'm where I've always been. I'm in Oklahoma. I'm an Oklahoma guy. Uh, my house is 10 miles away from where I grew up. There's a safety being right here for me so number one i mean he loaded up everything and moved to a city that is somewhat intimidating i mean new york city versus yukon oklahoma you know he gave up that that feeling of everybody's going to accept me here to go to a place where chances are nobody's going to accept you and he's done well It's great, like it's amazing and fun, but it's also like, I mean, it's very real. And I mean, essentially, essentially what this life is, is what I just did. Cause like my regular lighter is out of fuel. So essentially I'm smoking one of the best cigars I've ever had. It's a very nice cigar, pretty, ex a very expensive cigar. And I lit it with a barbecue lighter. That's what being a comedian is. It's having something great, something pure, something amazing. And <laughs> this is your instrument right here. I mean, it's been, it's crazy that, that when we started this six months ago, seven months ago, the idea of recording this, like an album was always kind of like on, it was on my radar. I mean, I've always wanted to do it, um, but it's something that just kind of like, it materialized in such a crazy way and it was so fast and uh, the label was on board and I had lots of support from a lot of people. I mean, to have... You know, like my buddy Nick and my buddy Nate and have them to be like, dude, you're absolutely, re you're 100% ready. To have people that you look at and you idolize and look up to and admire and have them all look at you and be like, yeah, dude, you are 100% ready to do this. It just kind of, it just. Here's the thing, bro. You gotta, you, you, you gotta, you gotta believe that your generation is strong because they are. You guys are strong. You wanna know how I know millennials are strong? Because they've conquered other generations' nightmares. They have. They've conquered other generations' nightmares. I live in New York City, and millennials have conquered Brooklyn. They conquered it. Brooklyn used to be the scariest borough in New York, unless somebody from the Bronx is here. Uh, I guess you gotta check on that one because they get real stabby about shit like that. They conquered it. Brooklyn used to be so scary, and now it's like the lobby of Google. Now, like that's what it looks like. 
Like, you want to know how much has changed? This is, imagine in your head the toughest, scariest, broken stereotype that you can come up with. The kind of guy that if you saw him walking towards you, you'd cross to the other side of the street. And know that I've seen that guy walk into a gluten-free cupcake place, okay? Like, that's what... But I think we can all agree. I, I want to tell you guys from the bottom of my heart, you guys are an absolute pleasure to perform for. Me. My name is Justin Smith. Thank you so much. So I'm, I'm writing it down so I won't forget it. Uh, this is the hour that that I just taped, and that came out of harnessing all these, all the note cards, all these ideas that were all. It came from all that. That turned to this. That took seven years to do. To put this together. And now it's starting all over again. Now it's the next project. Now it's the next thing. Just keep going. Boss wood chicken in like my name on the guest list. Dressed like I was granted a death wish. Blessed like the cross on my chest. Boy, they gon' stretch. Whoever reaching for my neck, I don't wanna flex. I act hard, I'm not dead. But I live my words. And I ain't finna sell a nigga dreams like I'm rich and famous. Cause I'm stealing more. But I do wanna shine a little piece. I wanna see the diamonds tell time and the peace. Want a house or the land, I'm a buy.